Before we look at the finished product, let me show you the process of making it. Alright, so it obviously started with me wanting to create a Mandelbrot set. I wanted to create it in Python by making a window using tkinter or pygame, drawing each individual pixel and displaying it in the window. I could have used processing because it already has a window and it very easily draws the pixel and even can take screenshots of the screen so that you can make a video of the zoom. However, I did not do that because I had more experience with Python and I wanted to test my skills. It ended up that the only skill that that tested was my ability to read complicated documentation. So in late February, I decided to take the first step of doing this project. What is the first step? Well, since the Mandelbrot set involves complex numbers, we will need to find a way to handle complex numbers and create them. So I created my first script, which was complex.py, which contained a class in it called complex. Complex is basically a complex number. It contains a real integer and an imaginary integer. And basically it does math with that. However, I created very few mathematical operations. This is mainly because the Mandelbrot set doesn't have many operations in its equation anyway, so I don't really care. The operations contain add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It also contained an exponent function, which only supported real integer exponents because it uses recursion, which is not very good. It also contained a scale function, which is basically the distance from the number to the origin on the complex plane. So basically the Pythagorean theorem. That was actually pretty easy and soon I got it. However, I was scared to make the actual Mandelbrot set itself because that was a pretty complicated thing to make and I wasn't very good with that. So in the Mandelbrot function, there are two inputs. The number you want to calculate and the number of iterations that you want it to do. And the more iterations, the more accurate your result is. The Mandelbrot set is created by reiterating this function on every number in the complex plane. As for my Mandelbrot function, it will return zero if the number in question is inside the Mandelbrot set. That is, if it has not exceeded two in the time that it has reiterated the formula. However, if the number is outside the Mandelbrot set, that is, it is exceeded two, then it will stop the iterating loop and will return however many iterations it took to exceed two. Sorry if I haven't explained this well because I'm just trying to get through this part because this is the complicated math part which isn't that important. But after half a month of procrastinating in March, I finally made the Mandelbrot set function. It was actually pretty easy to make, unlike I expected. Little did I know that what was ahead of me was really, really, really difficult. Actually rendering the thing. So remember at the start how I said I would use Pygame or Tkinter? Well, both lacked the ability to render single pixels. Well, they actually did have the ability to render them, but it was very complicated and unintentional. Also, even if I did do it successfully, it would be very laggy since it used the C you to render it. So in early April, I stumbled across this library called PyOpenGL. It's basically a Python OpenGL port, and when used with Pygame, it can use the GPU to render things. I'm not sure if PyOpenGL was able to render individual pixels, but it was intended for three-dimensional rendering, and I only wanted a two-dimensional Mandelbrot, so I just kind of threw it away. Eventually, I found a 2D library named Piglet, which its name is a huge pun. Like, pig -let. Eh. You don't get it? Oh, okay, never mind. Apparently everyone begins their Python libraries with Py, so there's that. It also uses the OpenGL framework, so that's ghoul. And finally, to end the pun, we have an et, so it's piglet. I took a ton of time to read the documentation. Actually, not a ton, but it was very difficult. And then one day later, we have the first working version of the Mandelbrot set. It is very downscaled and incorrectly positioned, so sorry about that. But I was really happy and made another two versions. The first version was incorrectly placed. The second version was uh, correctly placed, but then I realized I should make the window aspect ratio a little bit bigger. So here's the final actually working version. However, these do not have any shading, that is any colors that uh, represent how many iterations it took, so yeah. So I proceeded to make some kind of shading. The first version is here. This method of shading is not iteration adaptive, so it kind of changes shading when you increase the number of iterations, so... And I rendered it another time in Seahorse Valley, like here, and this one was a thousand iterations, which meant that because it wasn't iteration adaptive, it looked a lot darker. 
At this point, I realized I could make this into a video, so I started recording and started explaining how I would create each render. Which wasn't really a render, it was just a display window, and I, the only way I could make that an image is if I screenshotted it. And basically what I tried to do when I was recording is find a new shading method that would work better. So here you go, here's when I started recording. So, I made this Mandelbrot renderer. It runs faster using PyCache. Like right there, Pi compile. So basically, the way I'm going to compile this is I'm in the folder right now, and I'm going to type Python to go in Python. Import. I'm. I have to import Pi compile, and then I have to do Pi compile dot compile, and then I'm going to compile Mandelbrot.py. All right. So now that I've compiled that. Now go into the PyCache folder, so let's exit this, and then let's go to uh, CD Py PyCache, and then let's go to, uh, go ahead and Python, uh, mandelbrot.cpython36.pyc, and uh, yeah, it'll start rendering whatever is here. Alright, let's wait for that to happen. Uh, it'll happen in a very long time. So basically there's this window. Uh, the window is unresponsive currently because it is lagging a lot trying to compute all of the different pixels colors. Uh, this is 1000 iteration so it's relatively slow. Um, hopefully it shows the full man of rot set. It'll be very dim. I don't think you'll be able to see it. But anyway, yeah, that's basically what's going to happen. And yeah, you're just going to wait for the progress to go. So basically, uh, this is how many pixels it's calculated the value of. This is going to take a while. It's slower when it calculates the pixels inside of the Mandelbrot set. So you'll see it randomly accelerating once it gets out of the Mandelbrot set. So yeah, that's so basically when it finishes, it's going to print out all of the data Except it can't really print it all of it out because like um the the space is not big enough for that. So yeah. And then you open this and then you find it's a black window. What? Okay, you need to minimize it and then open it. And then you see something. Well you at least see something, but because it's 1000 iterations, you can't really see anything. I I cannot for the life of me figure out how to shade it properly. But uh yeah, that's the man of world set. Alright, so I tried a different method of shading. And I have to say, this actually turned out pretty well. Except for the weird outer ring. I don't know how that happened. How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Alright, well now we don't have that weird white border thing around here. This is now black. Uh, even though it's colored like this, it's actually not exactly the same. This is one iteration, this is actually zero iteration as represented by my complex module. However, uh... That's actually weird. Alright, so this is another way of shading. Uh, so I decided that I would like make it modular so that it will go like dark, light, dark, light um, as it goes on to the more iterations. However, I cannot see that in action right now for some reason. I think I accidentally did it wrong, but that doesn't matter because this is a pretty good way of doing it. You can see a dark shade over where the Mandelbrot isn't. However, you can still see like the, because of the contrast, you can still see the little hairs of the, where the Mandelbrot is like microscopically thin. Also, you can see the mini brot a little bit better. All right, so here I um zoomed in on Seahorse Valley and now you can actually see that, see, it goes from dark to light and then to dark and then to light. But you can't see any more because uh, you'd have to zoom in a lot for that. And uh, this is an extremely slow method of calculating because you literally have to calculate every pixel. So yeah, sorry about that. Alright, so I'm happy with how it turned out. This Mandelbrot set is looking gorgeous right now. Although my algorithm is really slow and also uh, the shading is weird. I'm really happy with it because it was made by me and I'm happy with whatever I made. Uh, enough rambling, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I desperately need optimization for this so if you have any algorithms for that, 
uh, please send it in the comments. But I probably won't understand that because I am bad at math and coding. So yeah, um, anyways, bye.